So I'm back again. I realize it's been a while since I've created a video. So I thought I'd show you the very start of a process. I've gone back to collect carrying my sketchbook, both at work, where I bartend, and so that's a sketch of a dining room table. But the other day I had to go downtown and walk past a construction site right at lunchtime. So I made these sketches of the guys gathering to eat their lunch after a, um, you know, along the curb at the uh, barrier on the road, actually on the sidewalk in that case, and these gentlemen sitting here. And I want to turn this into a painting, just so you know, this is like waiting in a waiting room at a hospital. This is again a work image. This is sort of my Monet painting. This will probably become another image. But I thought I'd show you just a little bit of the start of the process. So I'm going to, f I've been looking at these images and sort of jet, I'm going to distill this into one image, all of these sketches. Now I work with the paint sticks as you've seen, and I work on 100% um, rag paper. And of course the very first decision you need to make when working on the painting is what is the orientation? Is it a vertical or a horizontal? So I'm sort of deciding my dimension here. I'm feeling like that's going to be the point. So, and this is one of the reasons I like working on paper, is if you paint on canvases, you kind of have to build your canvases ahead of time. And then, so, so you're kind of stuck before you ever decide on your image, you're creating some uh, rectangles that will become your paintings. Now working with paper, you see, I am just deciding what that's going to be right before I start the work. Get a little crinkle here. So I'm a lot freer to decide what I want to do once I had the painting in mind rather than trying to do it another way. So, because initially I was thinking this might be a vertical image instead of a horizontal, but I have... Um, Settle on the horizontal. Just trying to get it straight. Oops, got to move over some. I got to run into another painting here. It's on the wall. All right, that'll work. And so I'm just push pinning to my painting wall. This is a studio I built. Shockingly enough almost 25 years ago, and I do mean I built it. So I've got my rectangle, I'm push pinning up the paper. Ooh. Now there's a crease in there from the packaging, which I'm not happy about, but the nice thing with this media, the paint sticks, is it's thick enough that I can probably make that disappear. Also realizing I'm not quite vertical, but you know what? I'm going to roll with it. So, of course, if you paint on a canvas, you have the advantage framing is much cheaper. Because I have to build a backing board for this when I frame. I used to always put the work under glass or plexiglass to be accurate, but I've stopped doing that. I have a friend who has a painting that's been hanging in his kitchen unframed, just pinned to the wall like this for 30 years and it looks just like the day I painted it. So, and it's oil paint. This is Arches Two-Tone Cost paper, 100% rag, acid-free paper. It's got a nice tooth to it. So it gives me a nice surface to work with. I'm gonna stop for a second and put on 
like I said, I showed you images of me working in a restaurant or images from that I sketched while at work. So I have to keep my hands clean. Nobody wants to see a bartender with purple and green and yellow hands. And these are oil paints that I work with, in essence. So that's the vinyl gloves. Just keeps my hands clean. Keeps me from having multicolored hands stained from the oils. So, and as I've shown you in previous videos, I'll start with a yellow oil stick as my sketching tool. As you notice, I don't have a finished sketch. I don't have what the paint is going to be. It's the way I work. And in the past, I did used to make some preliminary sketches. But I like everything to happen right on the surface. So I'm sort of looking through these images again. I think I want to capture part of this. And I, the original thing that caught my eye was everybody lined up along the wall. So I'm probably just going to use those. So starting with this guy and then working, so combining those two sketches. Now, as I said, I start with the yellow oil stick. And if, for those who haven't seen paint sticks, Shiba Paint Stick is the brand. And you'll find them packaged in this stores like this, usually hanging on a rack. I take the paper off almost immediately um, because they all rub down. Now, as I've said in the past, I don't work all the way to the edge. I like that rougher. And then I can break the picture plane. I've actually tried, I've been doing stained glass lately and have broken the picture plane with the glass. So like I say, I think Excuse me, starting with these three. So we'll have this guy who's reclined. Move his head in a little bit. Push him right up against the edge, almost as though he's leaning on the edge of the painting. Hands back up, it's folded in his lap. Legs coming out. So he sort of creates the boundary, I think. And this is intentionally light and loose. So his buddy's talking to him. And maybe, as in the sketch, he's sort of making a gesture. Now, are they talking about part of the project they're working on? And then this guy's sitting up on the stoop, so we actually probably won't see his head, or maybe just his chin as he looks back down. And now what I wanted to also do is work in, so that's just sort of the pieces I want to take from this piece. And then these guys, so we're going to have their two heads maybe looking back in and they've got those World War II or World War I rather doughboy kind of hard hats on. And because, so he's leaning. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to shove him back a little bit. But that's fine. See, this is why I like to do it all here, I'm making the decisions and moving the painting around on this service. I'm, and it's not to belittle anybody else in the way they work, but I find that if I solve all these questions prior to starting the painting, then I'm almost, I'm sorry, Hesitating, I mean, I'm hesitating here, I don't want to be unkind, but I feel like if you sketch it all out, then you're just illustrating, recreating the sketch and not following, you know, you're not creating an image. 
And I think this cone will be a nice bracket here for this side of the painting. Now I had thought of adding this roadblock element in. And actually I think I can. Because originally there's this fence behind here. But I think it might be more interesting if I have these contraposto sort of diagonal lines. Contraposto refers to a, a pose where your shoulders down and your hips up, sort of kind of like this. And it, it's this elegant position in the figure. Um, you'll find it a lot in um, Renaissance paintings. There's a number of paintings of, um, oh, I can't think of the saint now who was pierced with arrows, and that's a classic const, uh, contraposto. So this is just the sort of quick idealization of the image. I think I need to move these guys up and this guy over a little bit. And so when I get into moving things, then I'll move because you probably can't see what this is because I'm having trouble seeing it. So, I think we'll move. So here's our guy at the edge. Here's his buddy talking to him. And one of the other things that drew me to this image, and I'll repeat, and it would become a repeating element, is of course they all have safety vests on. So that will sort of be the continue, continuing marker in the painting that sort of the echo back. Um, you know, there's this thing in comedy where you initiate a situation in the, in the beginning of your routine, of your set, and then you echo back to it later on as you move through your act and you get to the very end and you get the payoff. Painting has some of that same kind of quality to it in that you want to have some sort of repeating element. Um, I think I have videos up of the last painting I did where we echo a red hat over and over and over again or we echo a hand gesture. It's that sort of constant recall that can give the rhythm to a painting. So if you think, again, using a, a, another art form reference, think of the uh, underlying bass line, the rhythm lines of a musical score. You get the same idea. You get sort of this, that's the rhythm that holds everything else. And then you can have your flights of fancy um, and the score and the metal, metal that can't say that word melody. So this will be this um, brilliant yellow safety vest that repeats. It was one of our dogs outside my studio's behind the house. So that's Pippin enjoying the day, cool sunny day. All right, so that's sort of where we're gonna go. Um, I think in one of the other sketches, you can see a guy's lunchbox. And just because that's the subject of this painting, his lunch break, I think I'll, I'll add what could be his lunchbox. I'm looking at his legs, so I'm going to bend one. Now that I've done that, I'm thinking it might be better to bend the back one and leave the straight one out, like that. Now given that, I think this cone is too high. So I really am sort of massaging and feeling this thing as I go. And I think that my way of thinking gives the painting more life. 
Now, I don't want to make these videos too long because I tend to skip long videos and I'm guessing most of you will. So I hope you will give me a like, follow, and of course check back. So I'll be working over on this for the next oh, week or so, who knows, I don't know exactly the work schedule that I've got coming up. My uh, job work schedule is going to keep me pretty busy and it is Mother's Day, it started Mother's Day weekend. So, you know, honor must be paid to those mothers, both the one I'm married to and the one who raised me. Could be our argue the one I'm married to raised me. We've been married a long time. So there you go. So that's sort of the idea. Again, I'm using Shiva paint sticks. I'll put a link to their website, the company website. And then also... Um, a link to my website where you can see other completed paintings and that's gregleach.com but I'll put it in the notes and yeah I like the way this is going I'll get those stripes figured out chasing the edge of the paper pretty hard there so if this is one of the things I was talking about, like if this is the, going to be the edge of the painting, then we have this little breakthrough right there. And, you know, I may probably break one of these helmets through. And so push and break the edges. And that's the reason I don't go all the way to the edge. I don't like that hard rectangle to end the painting. It just, that's not the way we see things. And while we've been conditioned to that through film and such, it's just not reality. All right. So I hope you find this informative. I'll come back probably tomorrow with another video, which will have this painting develop more. I'm, of course, going to keep working on this. But um, there, you get a good idea of what, what I'm trying to do, hopefully. And I'm now seeing, because I've stepped behind, that you don't quite get the whole image. But there it is. Thank you for your time. Thanks for looking. Again, gregleach.com. And I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. Greg's Art for Twitter and Art of Cycling on, no, backwards. But I'll put that in the menu or the comments. Art of Cycling is my Twitter handle.